cold, <laughs> brisk, but sunny morning here on the Matt Howe River. Right in the foreground here, I'm looking at the bridge over the river at Carlton. And with me this morning is Keith Rowe. Now, if you fish the Matt Howe River, you probably know Keith because he is one of the fish checkers that keeps track of the number of wild and hatchery fish caught in the stream. And you know, in his spare time, Keith catches quite a few steelhead. And he has really refined the technique for fishing this size of river. And that usually means using some pretty light tackle. And he's agreed to share some of what he's developed over the years fishing on the Madhouse. And you've been fishing the Madhouse, Keith, what, since the late 70s? Yeah, about 77, 78. So you're familiar with every yeah. rock and stump in this grid? Well, most of them, though, they change every year. And, and I moved over here in about 83. Yes. So, then to, from then on, it's been pretty steady. And uh, until they closed it in 97, then they reopened it in 2002. And right. Every year, it's, it's been nonstop. We've had some really good consistent years with returns of steelhead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's sort of a mixed blessing with that. Uh, and I think I recall this year, 60% of the fish were going to be wild. Now, that's good news for recovery because that means we're getting a lot more wild fish coming back sure. to the upper Columbia. The bad news for anglers is that they're going to be releasing a lot of fish. And people that want to keep a steelhead for the barbecue or Christmas dinner, that's a disappointment. But for those of us that just love the thrill of catching and releasing steelhead, we're living in wonder. Yeah. Hey, the, the ratio uh, has been about almost 50-50, depending on if, where you're fishing on the Met Howe, yeah. the lower end, the upper end, um, and you get to Columbia and that kind of stuff. So. Chances are you're going to get a hatchery fish or two. Once you get your two, you're done anyway. So that's right. Who wants for to this year? Early? <laughs> you know? And also, now, what do you? What would you say in a, a overall average size for steelhead on the Matt Howard? This year, two thirds of the run is what we call one salt fish. So yeah. that's going to run you between four and six, seven pounds. And then the other third is going to be the two salt fish, which are the bigger fish. Right. And they're going to run you, you know, that nine to uh, you know, even up to 16 pounds if you find one of that size. That's a so, big fish yeah. in this small water, I'll tell you. Well, it'll give you a tussle. Well, and I know that's one of the reasons that you've developed techniques that usually the Manhau River, particularly when you get into the, the winter time when the water gets lower, you're talking a lot about low water and clear conditions. Right. And that can be a challenge. And so now, uh, oftentimes, I've used up to a 3 8 ounce jig on the main stem Columbia when there's a lot of current and maybe some turbidity, you know, some color in the water. But now Keith, he kind of laughs at me when he hears about those weights because you're talking to a guy that ties 16th and 132nd ounce jig. And a few 164s. And some 164s. Now we're talking about extreme end of light tackle presentations. Correct. And this is what's going to be exciting to learn about, is not only those styles of jigs, but then what other tackle components you put together to make for subtle presentations on low, clear conditions on the Matt Howe River. So what we're going to start off with today is some step-by-step -step instructions on what components that you put together and recommend for fishing this type of water on a smaller river like the Matt Howe here in central Washington. No one is happy about having to repair a vehicle after an accident. However, I was very happy when I chose First Choice Collision Center when I needed this service. I can't say enough about how they treated me. Fast and friendly just doesn't say enough. They have amazing technology to make a damaged vehicle look like new. At First Choice Collision Center, you can expect modern service with old-fashioned values. That was my experience, and I'm sure it will be yours, too. Your town Ford is kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the Built Ford Tough Truck Event. 
Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built Ford Tough, like the Ford F-150, with a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine. The power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty, with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. If you're looking for power, payload, towing, economy, your town Ford's got the truck for you. Head to your town Ford in East Wenatchee. We're going to start right at the beginning. I want to be able to take people <coughs> step by step through the process and how you rig for low water clear conditions. Now, let's start with the rod. And on the main stem Columbia, I, and I'm fishing from a boat most of the time, right. and the rod I'm currently using is 10 9. Now, on a river, you've got more challenges with moving water and all of that. And of course, line control is really exactly. important for steelhead fishing. So. What's your favorite rod length? 12 and a half, 13 and a half. Yes. Um, usually a light action or light, light to medium. Uh -huh. Something that'll handle up to 10 pounds of line minimum uh, weight, weight of your line. Right. Um, and as far as castability for the amount of weight it'll cast, um, anywhere from 16th or an eighth to you can go as high as maybe half ounce or three eighths ounce. Right. So, and again, the length of that rod allows you to keep that line high That's right. and very easy then to mend the line, almost like with fly fishing. Exactly. The challenge is keeping a nice straight line to your bobber. You don't want to have a bunch of slack line laying on the water because sure. when that bobber goes down, you've got to be on it. You want to be on it pretty quick. That's right. So. Now tell me, You've got your nice long rod here, and you were showing me earlier uh, kind of a specialized reel. Uh, some of the choices, some of the more popular reels, I, and I noticed you have one, is the Fluger President. That's right. And I've used the Fluger for many years. I mean, the, the Fluger President, I've used Fluger for many years, but the President, uh, of, like the one that's on this uh, one rod here, about six years, and it's caught a lot of fish. A, few, a couple years ago, Fluger came out with a, a new reel. Yes. And it was called the Arbor. And what it is, is I'll bring it up here and show yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and what it is, is it has a larger Arbor diameter wise. Nice, big spool. Exactly. Head. And, yeah. the, and the nice thing about that is, is that when you're casting lighter stuff, it comes off real easy. Yes. And when you're just getting the drift for the line just to keep peeling out as you're drifting down, it comes off real easy. And then the other thing is, is that when you're picking line back up, it picks it up faster. Because mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're doing a long drift and you get a bobber down and you got to be back into it and you want to pick up some line, you may have a lot of slack out. You got to pick it up as fast as possible. So, and, and it comes in different sizes. Yes. Um, and it, you just match the size to your rod or <clears throat> how much line you want to put, you know, put on here. Right. Uh, this particular one will hold 150 yards of 10 pound mono, which is what I have on. Mm -hmm. And or, and then it also can, it has a rating and an extra spool for braided or spectra line, whatever you need. And right. that particular spool is designed so you don't have to put backing on it like you're supposed to with most braided line or, or spectra line. Right. So, but that's, that's what I found that I like. And I've been using this for now two years or three years. And I really Just enjoyed it. And one of the reasons the Fluger and the President has been popular with steelhead anglers is it's got an excellent drag. That's right. The drag's Very good, the smooth. bearing systems, everything. I mean, like I said, and I'm using the President, which is kind of the moderate low end. I've never had any problem with it. Yeah. I haven't worn it out yet, and I've wore out other reels Yes. in now, a shorter I've, time. I've used one myself for many years, and this is another great Fluger product. And one of the things you mentioned now, I, I use an Abu Garcia Soron reel, which was the first reel that was built that had a spool for braided lines. Right. So it had a rubber grommet in there that allowed the line to bind to it exactly. and it wouldn't slip on the spool. And they've incorporated that into one of the spools that's available. Right. They, they have uh, rubber strips that go that are embedded into the, the, reel, the spool itself. There's a lot of nice <clears throat> features. This larger arbor is a key, especially... Yeah. Like you say, when you're extending your drift, allowing that line to get down, and then also a fast pickup. That's right. You know, it is important. Now then, you've got a rod and reel, and today you see you've got mono on here, and that's for really cold conditions. Yeah, when it's, when it's cold out, well, when we pulled in here, I think it was 18. Yes. Um, the, 
the, the uh, spectral lines or the braided lines have a tendency to get really stiff and then because they shed water, they shed the water right into the reel of the spool and it, it has a tendency to, you can't cast. Right. So uh, when it's really cold, I use a mono and I use, uh, what I'm using right now is Raven mono and it's a, uh, it was actually designed for the guys who do the center pinning and it's a semi-buoyant line. So, which means it gets a little float on the surface. A lot better than straight mono, which right. is going to be a problem for barber. And you want high vis. Oh yeah. So that when you're mending, you can see where your line's at and pick it up off the surface. Right. So, And then when we get a little bit warmer conditions, say, you know, a real warm 30 degrees. Then I switch over to the hydro float that I use. Right. So. And you know when and the, the hydro float is a good bobber fishing line. Also, you know uh, there there are some other lines that you know, the key is it's got to float. It's got to right. be buoyant. And like I said, it's it, float, and then you want something in high vis visibility so that you can see that line as you're as you're drifting. Right. In case you have to mend it to adjust uh, your drift itself. So yeah. Okay. Well, and then of course. You're going to scale down everything. Uh, well, for example, right now, why don't you show us uh, the type of bobber that you would use? I use one or two brands, and one is um, the Drennan. Okay. Um, it's a clear, clear plastic. Yeah. Um, it's a slip float. Um, oh, and I see you can rig this either through the eye, right, or through the bobber right. itself. Okay. And there's some other companies that make similar floats. Um, and the, again, this one um, comes in gr grams instead of quarter gotcha. or yeah. ounce uh, fractions. So you have to kind of do a little math to figure out, you know, this is 11 grams, so that's a three eighths, <laughs> I think, roughly is what it, it right. plays out to. Now the other ones I use are um, what they call the West Coast Drift Float. And it's a dense foam type float. And again, that's a quarter ounce. And so. Very light. And, you know, uh, compared to the ones we're using on the Upper Columbia, just scaled down. Right. Some more slender and all that. And I'll tell you what, that bobber system is going to work great. Uh, in our next segment here, I think I want to talk about the types of leaders you use and really talk about the kind of jigs that Keith uses because he's a real specialist in that too. So we're going to be talking about that here real soon. Hooked on toys! When the weather starts to cool, it's the signal for hot fishing for steelhead. If you're not ready for this exciting season, better get to Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee. They have everything a steelheader needs, from rods and reels to jigs and bait. There's no better selection of all this gear than what you'll find on the shelves at Hooked on Toys. Get geared up. Get to Hooked on Toys at 144 North Wenatchee Avenue, and be sure to visit them on the web at hookedontoys.com. Hi, I'm Dave Grayville, the Fish and Magician, and I'm sitting in front of the Lake Pateras Inn. Lake Pateras Inn is one of the most convenient places you can stay if you like to fish for salmon or steelhead on the Upper Columbia River. You can moor your boat at the dock, or there are two ramps within yards. They have outdoor power so you can charge your electric motor. Rooms are clean and comfortable and very affordable. Everything you need is right here at the Lake Pateras Inn. Well, we've walked through the process of getting rigged properly for this style of fishing up here that we do on the Madhouse with bobbers. And we got down to the bobber, but now I want to remind people we've got a knot, and then we've got a bead, and then we put on our bobber, and then a weight below that. Right. And, you know, the whole idea is all of that slides up to that knot, and that's how you adjust your depth and you can very easily change your depth by sliding that knot right. up or down depending on your drift. And we can show that right here, kind of. So basically, you got your float, your weight, and here's your knot. So basically, you can move that up, or you can move it down depending on the depth you want to fish. There you go. So it's just that easy and it makes it so effective. We were talking a little bit earlier too about, you know, there's a lot of different techniques that'll catch steelhead. That's right. You can fish a corky, you can do as simple as spinners. But one of the reasons this is so popular 
is it avoids the hazards that you really run into frequently when you're fishing those other methods. This one allows you to keep out of the snags. If you're going the right depth. If you're going the right depth. And that's why it's really important to watch that barber to give you a reading of what's going on down below. That's right. Now, one of the things that makes it a challenge with the style of fishing that Keith has done and has refined is these ultralight jigs, 16th to a 32nd to even 64th right. ounce. You really have to watch that barber closely to see what's going on. Yeah, and the nice thing about this, the lighter jigs, the, the 30 seconds or the 164th, and to some extent some of the 16th, is in the river you're not going to um, snag into rocks because it's so small it just kind of goes through a lot of those rocks. That's true. The other thing is, is you want to keep it up off the bottom, 6 to 12 inches, and the lighter jig, because of current and so forth, doesn't deadhead float along. Or not float, but drag along. It actually moves side to side, up and down. It's it's not just sitting there blah and going along like an anchor. Any breath of current is going to exactly. impact that jig. So, so it's going to have a lot livelier action under the water. And your marabou, your rabbit, whatever material is breathing the whole time, and it's it's stimulating those fish. Yes, it makes it very attractive. Well, let's take one of the things I wanted to mention is something that's a little different than I do. Is an inline. Uh, sinker that has swivels on both ends so this isn't going to slide up and down it's going to be fixed to your line but your bobber will move up and down which another thing that Keith has shown me is that even when he's using a line that floats like a, one of the super lines he actually puts some monofilament below that so that his bobber is sliding on the mono rather than on the super line which causes abrasion but now let's really get down to business and show people some of the jigs that you tie. Okay, well, for today, we're doing the, the black, and it's actually black, white, head, and red accent on it, and that's been working pretty good. Um, some of the other ones of late, I mean, here's one I pulled out, but anyways, it's the black with the chartreuse. Now, all the, all the heads I use, like I was telling you earlier, they're all pearled. Yes. Uh, because it just seems to show up better than just a standardized color. Right. So I, pearl, I pearlize all the heads. Okay. Um, and then some of the other colors, you know, my box isn't too organized because I've been going through stuff, but of course oh, you know boy. me. You've got... Look at that. You've got blue. The blue. marabou with a pink. And then of course... It's a great color. Probably the one that catches a lot is the blue with the chartreuse pearl head. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then one of the other colors that was doing real good for me this year, if I can get it out of here, and it will kick in again, and that is, uh, oh, yeah. the olive. Olive with a pink head. Now, these jigs, people are not going to find jigs very often, and it's very rare to find them tied mm. to these weights. And so, Keith, if people wanted to track you down and get some of these jigs, I know they'll be able to find you on Facebook. How do they find you on Facebook? You know, if you're doing a search, just look for Raven Jigs. It'll probably pull it up, too. There you go. Uh, and then uh, there should be a phone number on there, but also my phone number is 509-429-5126. That's great. Well, I'll tell you what. I, so we've learned so much this morning about scaling down and refining the technique for fishing, in small water, low and clear conditions. And guess what? Now the fun starts because we're going to head out on the river and we're going to fish with Keith Road Jigs and his techniques on the Matt Howe River. The goal of battery systems is to provide the best products combined with the most efficient service at competitive prices. I've found their people live up to this, so don't buy anything without talking to them. You should make their batteries and accessories your choice to power your vehicles and boats. This is Dave Graybill and I choose battery systems to keep me running on shore and on the water. To find a battery systems product expert in a location near you, log on to batterysystems.net. Gaboon Productions LLC is a full service video production company right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Gaboon is a term coined by my grandfather, commercial fishing in Alaska. It's when a bunch of fish hit your net all at the same time. 
we capture life as you see it. From filming those special moments to catching something big, Gaboon Productions LLC can record it, edit it, and save it for you forever. We do weddings, theater productions, concerts, reunions, commercials, and more. Go to GaboonProductions.com on the web, check us out on Facebook, and on YouTube. Gaboon Productions LLC, the little video company capturing your big moments. Your depth is going to be almost center, and that's where your your structure is, where these fish want to lay down in. Um, and what it does, it runs about five five feet along there. And if you'll notice, it keeps its depth until it gets down into this area mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and then it that. trails back out. So, uh, and they're going to be laying anywhere, as you can see. That's kind of flat water, what I call winter water, and that's what they'll be laying in. Um, the tank's going to be subtle. So starting here, what we'll close do is again. We'll, we'll go down to the we'll go down to the point right here. Yep. I'll have you cast out. I'll let you go ahead and work that through. And now we got shore ice I up see here. That right there. So we may have to kind of Walk go up, up above. and make a few casts a little further up in there and see what happens up in there. Um, when we get down there. Basically, your depth is going to be. Uh, let's see, we. Okay, you can go, yeah, put it about two inches above your float. Okay, Keith and Raleigh are getting set up for their first cast on our first hole here. Fish with Keith, I'll remind you, is Raleigh Schmitten. He's a... Uh, one of my frequent fishing buddies. We've caught a lot of steelhead together on the Upper Columbia. So let's see how we do here on our first hole on the Met Hound. Seeing this bobber drift down, there's a little bit of ice float down the river too. Yeah, I'd say there's ice. <laughs> well, Keith, now you showed us exactly powder rig. Now, when you put this all together, what you're trying to do is keep your line kind of in uh, line with your bobber. Is that right? Possible, yeah. Mend it as you go. That's where that long rod really comes in. I saw my float did not come back up when I jigged it. It was so subtle. I had to put a little bit of action on the float to get him to take. I thought maybe, okay, we got to... Well, if you want to grab the net, we're going to go up here. I don't want to use the shelf. Yeah, there's a big rock shelf right below us here, which would make it uh, difficult to land. It is, isn't it? Hey, Jake, where's the pillow? Well, I'll be darned. We hooked a coho. I thought that fish looked awfully dark. 
for a steelhead this time of year. There's still coho in the river. I'll be darned. I thought for sure when that bobber went down we had our first steelhead. But again, it was because I was moving it a little bit. And that float just disappeared. Well, Next time you look. If I didn't see it. <laughs> a little better fish? sitting down the current now on me. So I got him and the current I'm dealing with. There he goes. <laughs> Nice little fish. All right. Nice fish. Good one. Just shake him off and do it again. Hey. I don't care if I catch one now because I've gotten I got the steelhead. That's all I need for the day. There you go. So ice in the guides. And the mistake a lot of guys do is they just come in there and dry pick the ice out. Yeah. Well, sometimes that can chip your guides. Oh. So what you're better off doing is just and just melt the ice off. Just breathe it out. Just breathe it out. And, and that way, because on some of these, especially any porcelain or, or even metal ones, you can actually damage your guides. And then what happens is you start cutting your line. And the next time you get a nice 16 pound steelhead and your line parts, you're gonna know what's that. That was a slow take, like you say, in this colder water, they're not uh, jumping on them. Net boy's off doing something else. That's right. I think he's snagged. <laughs>
Well, we'll get down to it. I'll be net boy. We'll see what we've got here. Yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of shoulder to it. Yeah, we'll see what we've got. Yeah, they, uh, especially with this light tackle, it's easy does it. Well, if you notice too, is to keep it off the reel, I'm using my hand as part of the drag system. Ah. So that I don't have to mess too much with my drag. And you're using the current, too. Yeah. Every time I can get him to cross current, to go with current, it, it restricts his breathing. Oh. So it, it kind of prevents him, it, it tires him out. Right. The idea is to get him in as quick as possible, and if it is a while, get him back out as quick as possible. Right. It's like that last one, I knew once I saw it, I just kind of gave, I didn't let it have any more drag and started pulling up on him. <laughs> I wanted to do that real close to the shale. Like I said earlier, normally I'd have taken him gone into here, but I got that shelf ice, so I can't get Oh, in. yeah. Into that back eddy. Well, he hasn't broke water, but... Getting closer. The female, even in this cold condition, sometimes will break water. If it is, it's still in Coho still in here finishing up the spawn, it's hard telling sometimes like we did the first one. Yeah. Well there he goes again and of course he wants to get down to that shelf. Of course. He wants to hide. He doesn't like the shallow, but he's not gonna like it when I get him in the shallow water. There I got a glimpse. It's amazing how much pressure you can put on a fish with uh, that long rod and even the light line. Eight pound, you can put a lot of pressure on fish. What do we got? Steelhead. He's about done too. Yeah. Great. Net boy. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Wild. wild fish. Okay. Put a little more pressure on him. Get him popped up. Feel that on the hook set up. I'm a little more solid. Like too. Okay, I'll run get the net. She's stout. She's a big girl. She is a big girl. Look at that. My goodness. Yeah, that's definitely a two salt fish. And look how clean her dorsal fin is. Oh. Yeah. That's a good indication it's a what we call a true wild or a natural origin fish. Big high dorsal. Yeah. 
well clean, no bending. Yeah. You know, and her fins are all in good shape, tail's in good shape, good adipose. Oh. She's about uh, 29 inches. Right, oh gosh. All right, big girl. Go make some babies. Very nice. Ooh, that was great, Keith. Well, with us today, fishing right alongside Keith Rowe, it's my buddy Raleigh Schmitten. And Raleigh, what did you think of uh, what we learned today about uh, light tackle fishing for steelhead? Keith, let me first of all say thank you. <laughs> no I, I'm amazed at what you can learn in, with somebody that knows water and the tackle that you introduced us to today, fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna take home a few secrets that I'm not gonna share with too many people. <laughs> well, it was my pleasure. Um, it was nice meeting you for the first time. Name has always come up, I, I get to meet you. <laughs> He's in trouble. Oh no. <laughs> uh, well, what you, what you impressed me is not only the gear, but reading the water, seeing you know, right on the seam, this edge, uh, those are things that I thought I knew, uh, but boy, did I pick up some, some great tips. That was the value of today. We learned a lot. That's something I love about fishing. There's always something new to learn. And Keith, thanks for sharing what you know with us. That's my pleasure.